this chanting thing because it continues a trend where fans cross the line. And it, and I know we've talked a lot about this with BYU Volleyball uh, and that Duke situation, you know, where there's zero video evidence that, you know, any of the allegations made there happen. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of video evidence. This really did happen. And it's shocking to me that nothing is being done about it. Absolutely nothing. And again, I sit here and I say to you, I'm tired of thoughts and prayers. It's it's just not good enough. There are no repercussions for singling out people based on you know their their faith, their color, their ethnicity. Uh, it, it, it's ridiculous, and we continue to allow it to happen in this country. And I think BYU has an opportunity here to take a stand and make something different, make change, because it, it doesn't matter to me if you're being singled out because you're you know black or Latino or because you're Mormon. It's wrong. And the problem Fast. is, even on Twitter yesterday, you know, like I, I'm having discussions with people on Twitter about this, people don't believe, A, that this is a problem, and B, what's more sad and what's really frustrating to me is that people will not get together and say, yeah, you know what, it doesn't matter what you're attacking people for, it's wrong. That's the problem. You're, we're having this argument about how attacking somebody because of the color of their skin is somehow worse than attacking somebody because they're Mormon. And I'm here to tell you, one is not wronger or righter, which are two words that were used repeatedly yesterday on Twitter. One is not like one is not okay or more okay than the other. <coughs> they're both heinous. They're both wrong. And it needs to stop. The problem is at Oregon, there are no repercussions for this. Yeah. You're a bunch of bigots. You're a bunch of jackasses who are bigots. And what did Oregon do? Oh, we're sorry. Our bad. We're not going to say we're going to do anything about it. We're not going to make any effort to do anything about it. Our bad. I'm sorry. Your apology is not good enough. God there bless. needs to be serious repercussions for this stuff. Yeah, and and I feel like I I, I you know we we kind of refer to that whole process as like thoughts and prayers, you know, and and I, and I and I feel like that is the sentiment, like. There, I, I don't know. So, so my brain naturally goes to, okay, what would be the discipline or, or, or what should they do? You know, like we know, like with the, as an example, like with the Robert Sarver stuff with the Phoenix Suns, like there's a clear, clean cut path to getting Robert Sarver out of the position that he's in. And there are some notable players, you know, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, who are not doing anything about it. The problem is in college football and on college campuses, I don't know what what that step is short of expelling a student or or like suspending them for a really long time or like whatever that looks like. I feel like your your options are way more limited and I don't know. So that's why I say it's hard for me to kind of measure like what is appropriate and what's not appropriate, but what I do know is simply saying sorry our bad is not good enough, you know, and, and that so to me, we get to sit here, it, it puts us in a position where we have to sit here and talk about this instead of talking about the fact that Bo Nix and the Oregon Ducks had a great week of football. That's the true crime in it, in my opinion. We, we have to sit here and the media gets to talk about how the student section was absolutely heinous in what they said rather than talking about how good Oregon was on the football field. That to me is is the shame in all of this. So once again, whether we're talking about Duke and Duke volleyball and, and BYU or we're talking about the Ducks and BYU or whatever, like it just seems like, you know, for better or for worse, BYU gets wrapped up in the middle of this stuff a lot. And I'm not even saying it's their fault. It just seems to be happening a lot lately. Well, and I, I thought it was interesting yesterday that um you know, people were sending me the tweet about the Oregon recruit who is LDS, mm -hmm. who was at the game on the field, and him and his father left um, because they heard the the anti-Mormon chats, uh, or chants, excuse me. So they left, and the, he is not going to go uh, to Oregon. I just, I th is that a repercussion? No, not nearly enough. Does, is that bad for Oregon football? Sure it is. But thing up. We're out of here. At some point, we have to stop with the excuses and the, hey, we'll do better next time. I, I just, I, I, you know, I know I pissed a bunch of people off when I said, I think it should be criminal. When you attack somebody for, you know, their a protected class. Yes. When you, when you attack people like that, it should be criminal. Yes. I, I, I just don't know how else to stop it from yeah. happening because it's not protected speech. It's not freedom of speech. It is hate speech. 
it is a civil rights violation and it should be criminal. Mm -hmm. In most other countries around the world, it is criminal. In our country, it is not even frowned upon. You know, that's what's so frustrating. Anyway, the double standard that BYU has to deal with on a regular basis to me is is horrifying. So that's why I say, I mean, when you're I completely agree with that. And that's why, like, you know, when the question is, hey, what's the bigger story? I think it's a big story what Pac, the Pac-12 did on the field this weekend as a conference. Yes. But the problem is, is, is that this type of thing off the field in the stands always seems to lead the news cycle. It always seems to be what we end up talking about. And I have to be honest, it's not fun to talk about. It's not like we roll up on the show every morning and we're like, yep, what racist comment can we talk about today? Or what <laughs> heinous comment can we talk about today? I mean, that's, you know, obviously we're not trying to do that, but it gets to a point where we don't have a choice. I mean, this is this is a big time, you know, D1, P5, like big time school. Like this is not poughkeepsie state like you know what i mean yeah. and, that, and that to me is the is is the issue and and obviously if if it was said at some small school it's an issue but because it's oregon it's an even bigger issue so i don't know what they're going to do about this my feeling is is once again this is going to be forgotten about this is going to this is going to kind of fall off through the news cycle and it's not going to be talked about anymore and it's just going to be something that we'll reference here or there when when something like this happens again but but I just it, it is frustrating that that it just continues to to happen over and over. Yeah, it is. Oh, by the way, they did play a football game. Exactly my point. All right, we can move on from that. Yeah. Do we I mean, should we should we talk about the football game? Sure. Um BYU should have probably tried to tackle in this game. Uh, this was an absolute throttling. BYU got beat badly by the Oregon Ducks. 41 to 20. Uh, BYU falls number 19 in the AP Top 25 poll. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin with this game. I mean, I, I thought, oddly enough, I thought Jaron Hall had one of his better performances. Um, I thought he threw the ball well. But there's two things that really stood out to me in this football contest for BYU. Number one, this offense has to run the football. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know why they're not running the ball. They're getting solid offensive line play. And they're just not running the ball well. They averaged two and a half yards a carry Again. against uh, against Oregon, which just frankly is not going to get the job done. So I don't know what BYU is going to do to change their fortunes on the ground. But if this team's not going to run the ball, they're not going to, to go very far this season. Mm -hmm. And they will not win games in the Big 12. You have to control the football. You have to run the clock. You have to control time of possession. BYU did not do that. BYU also did not tackle in this game. And you, I see all the comments and all the Twitter noise about, you know, got to fire Tuiaki. This was not Tuiaki's fault. I got news for you. Max Tooley completely overrunning play after play after play, being completely out of space being way over aggressive, running into multiple teammates because he was so over aggressive, that's not Tuiaki's fault. Come on, man. At some point, much like the Utah Utes found out at Florida, at some point the players have to take accountability, and at some point the players have to be in the right place and they have to tackle. That was the story of the first half of this game. The 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 first three touchdowns that Oregon scored. Go back and look at those drives, and you're going to see really bad fundamental tackling employed by BYU. And it is shocking. It is shocking the level that this defense fell to. But it's also shocking, and it is also not, not questionable anymore. If you're not going to get Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney back, this offense is going to struggle. Even as well as Jaron Hall played, he just didn't have wide receivers that were open. That much was very clear watching this game. He didn't have a whole lot of places to go. And it is really unfortunate that they just never got off the bus. I, I don't want to be too harsh about it, but mm -hmm. BYU just never really was in this game. You never felt like BYU was going to win this game. I don't know what Oregon was thinking, taking Bo Nix out so early, but they did. BYU gets back in the game a little bit. They were never threatening to win this game. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the thing that I thought was a really good point that the broadcast made after uh, Oregon scored a couple of times was that, you know, all week Oregon had heard about how physical BYU was. And I feel like Oregon took that personally and took it to BYU. And I, and I, and this is kind of what 
I said leading up to this game, as long as you're undefeated, which you are not anymore, but it, before the Oregon game, you were undefeated. And I said, as long as you were undefeated, you were going to get people's best every single week. And I think that's what you're seeing in this Oregon game. People are not here to just roll up to BYU, BYU games home or away and just assume, yeah, we'll beat BYU. It's not a problem. You know, they're not a good team. People know BYU are, are, is a great program. They know Kalani. Yeah. Obviously, like, they're familiar. And that's why I say it's not good enough just to think that, hey, like, yeah, we can run for two yards a carry on average, and that'll be good enough. That's not good enough. Like, we'll we'll be able, like, like Max Huey's going to have a great game every single week. That's not the case. Nobody has a great game every single week. So the question that I think is alive and well in the program right now is, was Baylor special, magic, you did an amazing job, or was Baylor uh, a couple breaks to get you that win? Because this loss, it's not just that you lost the game. You got your ass beat in this game. You got dominated. And that, to me, is now the question that has to be answered moving on to next week. Was Baylor legit? Did you actually play well to win that game? Or did you get lucky, and then you got embarrassed by Oregon, and now you got to figure out how to bounce back? Yeah. That's the problem. Yep, I agree. Let's get some of your comments in here as we talk all things BYU football to kick off the show presented by the Advocates, UtahAdvocates.com. Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like we're in this situation where it's make or break time for BYU. When, when you when you get through Wyoming, and again, I just maintain that Utah State game is a very dangerous game. Mm -hmm. But when you're heading for Arkansas and Notre Dame, and you you really have to understand now it's make or break time. Nothing's been lost. I mean, you you were you were never going to run the table with this schedule, in my opinion. But now we're going to find out what the metal of this team is. By the way, right. I think the other storyline that we have to talk about Jake Oldroyd's got to make a kick mm -hmm. and you're now you have real concern about the yips for this kid because he is a phenomenal kicker and he, if he continues to miss kicks it's going to be a very rough road because you just don't replace a guy of that quality and I don't know how he gets over whatever this is that he's dealing with he's got to make kicks because missing that field goal it's not his fault clearly that they lost to Oregon Missing that field goal did not help. It did not help at all. So yeah. uh, first one in, Karen Montemayor says, thanks for the awesome event at Barbecue Pit Stop. Everything was great other than the game and only having drums left when I went to grab wings. Big debate on drums versus flats at Barbecue Pit Stop yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Big debate. I know. And by the way, I would also like to remind everybody there was no there was no blue cheese dressing present. Yeah, that, at I mean, Greg stuff. was present, but no blue cheese was. Present. Yeah, how about uh, how about Greg Hawkins making an appearance? Yeah, uh, strange clouds says ha 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 Oregon lost LMFAO season's over. Eh, I don't know about that. Uh, good morning, guys. Talk about that Utah win and how they looked instead of talking about BYU got crushed by a team not as good. I'd say Oregon's pretty good. Oregon's, yeah, Oregon's good. Rant says Oregon has higher recruiting classes than BYU and Utah. I wouldn't say they're not good. Yeah. I would agree with that. Jesse Harsh, congratulations. Jesse says, morning, boys. Great show. By the way, winning that contest, top 10 moment in my life. Go Cougs. By the way. So Jesse Harsh was not at Barbecue Pit Stop on Saturday, mm -hmm. which I totally don't understand, Jesse. It's it's offensive. It is. But um, we called him on FaceTime. Yeah. And we should have screen recorded it. Yeah. Totally casual moment for me. Yeah, well, casual. Um, yeah, exactly. And Jesse's like, he answers the phone, and I'm sure it's like the odd number coming he's through. He's got like his, his phone's ringing, and he's like, he's like who is mm. calling me? Am I going to answer an odd random? And it's like real close to his face. And he's like over here and he's like. A rando FaceTime like, call. Hello. Hello. Is my car warranty out of date? <laughs> right. What do you mean it's Nigeria? <laughs> uh, but he answers the phone and he was real skeptical. He's like, hello. Hey, guys. On FaceTime. And then it's Jake and I were like, hey. <laughs> we told him he won. They were jumping up and down. It was great. Jesse, yes, congratulations, yes, yes. man. Appreciate you watching the show. Uh, hope you enjoy the trip to uh, Las Vegas. Rant says, BYU fans forgot they beat Ohio State last year. Uh, they have a better roster. I don't know if they have a better roster. I, I wouldn't go that far. Roy Wall says, Tuiaki needs to go. 
he's really holding this program back. I 100% disagree. Yeah. I 100% disagree. Was he holding the program back against Baylor? I don't understand how you look at the way this defense played and you put that on the coaches. I mean, you're you're just, you, you can only lead the player to water. You can't make them be assignment sound drinking. See, you can only put the linebacker in the A gap. You can't make them tackle. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, like, you cannot. You. What happened Saturday was not Tuiaki's fault. Yeah, I'm I just sorry, think, man. like, I think saying they didn't get off the bus is pretty accurate. Like, I, it really did feel like the defense was just like, yeah, okay, we're good. We beat Baylor. We can hang with these guys. Like, it'll be fine. It didn't feel like that intensity was there. And, and I'm not sitting here saying that they were sleeping on Oregon or they assumed that they'd easily beat Oregon, but you, but you know what I mean. Like, the feeling for in the club leading up to the game and, like, it, there's just a certain feel you have to have to win these big games on the road. And, and I felt like when it was, I think it was, like, 30-7 to 7 at one point or whatever it was, it just was like, damn, dude, like, yeah. we just did not show up this week. And that, and that to me is what's disappointing for the program because I have to agree, it's not on Tuiaki. The guy can't make you tackle somebody properly. He can coach his ass off and he can teach you technique and he can teach you how not to over-pursue Max Tooley. Like, he can do that. But if you're still going to do it on the field, whose fault is that? You know, so that's yeah. why I say it's just frustrating. Football at 50, every hour, 10 to the hour, we bring you the biggest stories in football. Uh, presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. Uh, awesome display of awesomeness in pizza stuff. Truly um, incredible. By Papa Murphy's on Saturday at Barbecue Pit Stop. Um, the guys at Barbecue Pit Stop fired up the Traeger Grills, the Ironwood 885s, the I'm Timberline real. Series. Yeah. And then we put the Papa Murphy's Pizza. Actually, Mrs. Monty put the Papa Murphy's Pizzas on the Traegers. Line of cane and B12. Woo! That was some goodness. Bomb. And by the way, everybody's favorite pizza the Monty special. Make sure you check it out online. Papa Murphy's uh, pizza. Get the app. Papa Murphy's pizzas app is easy to use. Use the promo code Monty 25 for 25% off your purchase. Um, where, where do we go in the, in the pack 12? I think USC is a real unknown. Mm -hmm. That defense is suspect. And it's funny. I tweeted Saturday night. Hey, this USC offense is amazing, but that defense is mediocre. <laughs> and it's gonna it's gonna cost USC games. Mm -hmm. The great Ryan Leaf, the former quarterback, right? Guy I know from ESPN tweeted back and said, Yeah, the defense will be mediocre, but they're just gonna keep eating wins. And I think he's right. Yeah, well, and, I mean, they, their program has all the hallmarks of Lincoln Riley. I mean, I mean, let's just get right to it. Like Lincoln Riley's teams have have been very consistent, extremely efficient on offense, very talented, fast. Like we're just better than you on offense. But the defense has always let them down. And I think that when you start playing SEC teams and you start playing, you know, teams that are college football playoff good. That's why Lincoln Riley doesn't win national championships. That's why he's in the college football playoff conversation and not in the national championship conversation. And to me... Should they be? Uh, mm, I mean, I think you're in the college football playoff conversa conversation right now if you're SC. I think you have to be. They're dominating teams, and they look good doing it. But, but it is it is Rice. It is Stanford. Well, it is Fresno State. Now they go to, to Research Stadium. Oregon State. The Beaver! Nice beaver. Mm -hmm. Probably too much. Um, Saturday night, right? 7.30 on my, here's my question. How is USC and Oregon State on Pac-12 network? <laughs> like this is a huge game in the conference. Because it's Oregon State. That's and it's why. On it's Pac Oregon State. That's why. Pac-12 networks. Yeah, nobody so. cares about Oregon State. That's the problem. Enjoy that broadcast, all three of you. Um, but this is a Don, huge game. Please. I'm telling you. And, and again, I understand they're not USC and they don't have the Heisman Trophy uh, winner to be Caleb Williams under center. But I'm telling you right now, the Beavs are 3-0. and The Beavs. The Beavs. And they've also, you know, played a cupcake schedule at Boise, Fresno State, Montana State. Right. Oregon State can play football. Yeah. And when the, you put up 68, 68 on Montana State. Well. Wow. This is gonna be a this gonna be a game, and I'm telling you, you 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 go to Corvallis and your hopes and dreams die. Yeah, and that is that is 
The next team but, that but loses if, their national championship aspirations in Corvallis will not be the first. Yeah, and this isn't this isn't SC's first time heading up there as a program and and you know getting killed, right? Like that's that's happened before. But but I just I, I don't know. I think I think they'll be fine. Like I think Lincoln Riley and that offense are it's just savage what they're able to do. And and that and and, and it gets to a certain point where they're just better athletes than you. They're just simply faster, and that creates opportunities. It's not like it's the scheme getting guys open, or it's not like it's missed tackles yeah. everywhere, and that's why guys are getting you know eight, ten yards after first contact. Like it's literally just that they're faster than you, and they get open. I mean, that's just what it is. By the way, are we gonna get some like NFL films music, or are we gonna get some? Dude, like, like I've been saying for like three weeks, we need music, and we haven't done it yet. But where's the NFL? Do you have NFL music? I have NFL music on the lock stuff. I don't have. Just NFL music right now. Man, need some music under football 50 presented by uh, Papa Murphy's Pizza. Um, the other the other thing I think that is so critical is, and we're going to talk about Utah football here in about five minutes, but I think th that firing Herm Edwards was a huge moment for the Pac-12. And if you didn't hear, Herm Edwards is out, out, fired. It's about well, oh, time. I'm sorry. Here, how do I, 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 should, I should say it. Um, they've mutually agreed to part company. You got to fuck one, marry one. Yeah, kill you're one. out. Go. I don't know why that was played, but you're out. Um, I, Herm Edwards was never the right hire. He's been there four plus seasons. They're 26 and 20, a massive recruiting scandal. Exodus from the program and the coaching ranks. Players have transferred. Like this is an ugly situation at Arizona State. But I think moving on from Herm Edwards makes them a more dangerous team. Now, obviously, if you're a Utah fan, you're going to find that out this weekend because where are the Utes? Well, the Utes are going to Tempe. Uh -huh. The Utes are going to curb stomp Arizona State. Uh, excuse me, curb I, stomp? I said curb stomp. Curb they will put stomp. their teeth on the curb. And Bro. Anyway, the point is, the point is, this is the move in the right direction for Arizona State. But if they don't fire Ray Anderson, their athletic director, I, I don't know... I would not trust him to hire another coach. You fired Todd Graham, who who essentially paid for that stadium to be renovated in, in Tempe. You fired Todd Graham to hire Herm Edwards, and it was a massive step backwards. Mm -hmm. And if the conference is going to be relevant, if the Pac-12 is ever going to be the power conference it's supposed to be, yeah, it never will be because it's going to die. Right. But Arizona State's got to play a huge role in that. And I think if you're Arizona State, the other thing I think that needs to be said about ASU is stop telling me that ASU is some massive program in waiting. Like John Canzano, the, the Oregon apologist, um, tweeting last night that, you know, Arizona State's a sleeping giant. There's no giant and they haven't been sleeping. They're not a good football program. <laughs> they're not a good athletic program, right? I mean, they're not. Let, let's be very honest about it. Arizona State, it's neat that you've had a better run than Arizona and all that's cool and stuff. Arizona State is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They have been, they're going to be, until they hire a real football coach who can come in and recruit, clean up the program, and actually, you know, win games of consequence. No yeah, with no due respect. You got to win games. Yeah. And Arizona State doesn't win games. Do you see what I Big mean games, about, about, about ASU and Arizona, though? When we talk about, like, college football expansion and, like, the value of the state of Arizona and their programs, they're not valuable. But, it, it, but they should be. It's mismanagement. It's Dave Hickey being a terrible athletic director yes, at Arizona. I don't even disagree with that. But, but again, like, I don't disagree with that. But they've been mismanaged for how long? It's them. It's the conference. It's everybody. Like, that's the problem. But perhaps the most hilarious part of Herm Edwards getting fired at Arizona State uh -huh. is that immediately ESPN, Pete Thamel, puts out a list of prospective coaches that they'll hire. Okay, so so who do we think was on the list? Number one, Kalani Sataki at BYU. Yeah, next question. So wait, let me get this right. And I, I'm look. I know I'm just little Monty. I do this little crappy just podcast this little thing. YouTube you know, show, no like, big deal. You know, like you're nothing in, your, to you're see in here. your son's basement. You know, you know. Yeah, right. Okay. He wears you know Oregon shirts and stuff. You're right. Yeah. Um, right. Let me get this right. Kalani is going to leave what he says is his dream job. Right. For a dumpster fire under investigation, likely to be sanctioned by the NCAA. Right. 
with no talent. They have no talent at Arizona State. Uh-huh. They lost to Michigan Directional School, <laughs> bro. And mi- by that? the way, Eastern Michigan was playing their backup quarterback. <laughs> And you got beat badly <laughs> at you home. Said Eastern directional. <laughs> Are you serious? So anyway, never mind all that. Then he wait. So wait, Kalani, who's been looked looked down the nose at mm-hmm. by all the Pac-12 schools, who now have all tried to hire him. Notice, oh well, you're just little BYU. We don't want you in our conference, you know, and stuff. But we'd hire you at Oregon, Washington, and now supposedly Arizona State. Yeah. Get out of here. F O H. Get out of here with yeah. that. Yeah. Get out of here with yeah, that. Yeah, 100%, man. dude. It's so 100%. ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. What's not ridiculous is Papa Murphy's pizza. No one goes all in on made from scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with the triple pet pizza for just eleven ninety nine. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. There you go, football 50, 10 to the hour. Every hour on the Monty Show is presented by Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure you download their app. Super easiest way to order, download the app. Schedule your pickup for any time you want. You can order at 10 a.m., pick up at 5 o'clock. The pizza will be fresh and ready to go. Waiting for you when you roll into the Papa Murphy's Pizza nearest you. Please do not forget also to order the, the chocolate chip cookie dough. You take it home as you're making the pizza. You're making the cookies. You eat the pizza. The Bomb. cookies are ready. Like, I'm telling you, hook it up. Papa Murphy's Pizza. Use the promo code MONTY25 for 25% uh, off your purchase of $25 or more.